<laughs> but so Gary, uh, as you share your screen, uh, yeah. would you be able to tell us? Now, Dan? Oh, anytime you want. Uh, but before that, uh, please tell us a little bit about uh, you because people know your face, but maybe they don't know a little bit more about you. And this is a good opportunity for us to get to know you. Uh, of course, my brother. Yeah, I'm Pastor Gary. I have uh, yeah, three young, young adult children. I have a wonderful wife. We have 1.5 dogs. One is a, full, uh, is a German Shepherd. The other one is a little Dachshund. So we call him a 0.5 dog. But uh, we, are, we are very blessed to travel around the world now on social media and speak to lots of young people around the world. So it's a blessing. I wish everybody had a chance to do what I, what I get to do every day. It's, it's really not a burden. It's a blessing to be with you. And I, I thank you, Dan, for inviting me. Absolutely, Joy, Pastor Gary. We love, uh, you know what, you need to know, as, we, as this idea came to us, we were like, well, uh, we need to find the first speakers because, you know, uh, it takes time to get uh, other speakers. We found yeah. the first speakers the, for the first coming we can. And the next thing we did is we wrote you and Pastor Andreas and all other good guys. Uh, Pastor Ron Whitehead is going to be with us next time. And Ooh, good. we want you guys to be able to share uh, your, your skills and your, your passion with our young people around uh, British Union, but also the world as well. Uh, thank you, Dan. And in fact, if, if Ron is going to be here, maybe I should wear this hat. I don't know. Should I? I, I don't think so. Uh, but after, <laughs> God bless you, man. Okay, my friend. So let, let me put it up on the screen here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it um, right here in just a second. Yes. Also, Pastor Gary, somebody just commented and said, you, you're the only one who can pronounce my name properly. Wow. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> oh, man. That'd be, that would be the first time in my life that I pronounce somebody's name right. So, <laughs> good name. Oh, very good. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with everybody. Let's start out with a word of prayer, if that would be okay. Yes, yes. And Dan, you're going to communicate. You and I are going to communicate back and forth in this, in this uh, one, okay? Yes, we're going to do that. All right, my brother. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for all of our Pathfinders and our Pathfinder leaders that are listening right now. And there may be some others that are just listening in and thinking, maybe I'd like to be a Pathfinder or be a part of club ministry or be a leader. I pray, God, that we can inspire them. I thank you so much for uh, Pastor Jonathan's message, message about birds and how important they are to you, Lord, and how unique they are. We thank you for reminding us of how creative you are, Jesus. We also want to thank you for Daryl's message to remind us the importance of technology and telling stories with emojis. That was amazing and the things that we learned. So Lord, we're, we're excited about learning more about storytelling. So I pray that you would teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So Dan, Dan, do you like stories and why do you like stories? I love stories. Uh, the reason I love stories is because I actually have, I, I struggle with reading. You need to know this. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my studies at Newport College, as I was starting to be a pastor, and it was really hard reading. And so when somebody would tell the story, I would sit and listen because it was so easy for me to take it. And I was able to live the story with them. It's so true. In fact, when you're sitting in church services, the, the most exciting time when everybody's guaranteed to be listening is when? When uh, somebody brings illustration. Is that right? Yes. Either in the sermon or storytelling time. It's our favorite time. Um, it, even the adults, no matter what your age is, as soon as it's children's story time, everybody's looking to hear what, what they have to say because stories are very powerful. You know, um, Jesus was the greatest storyteller of all times, right, Dan? That is correct. And Gary, I, I, I think that majority of people would agree about this, but let's just double check. Do you think Jesus was the greatest storyteller of all time? Let's just put that to everybody in the chat uh, uh, rooms and comments. Just have a look. Do you think that everybody, uh, yes, oh yeah. Uh, so everybody mm -hmm. on Zoom are saying, yeah, Jesus was the greatest uh, storyteller of, uh, well, uh, and many people uh, on our Facebook uh, live at the moment are commenting the same story. They are saying Jesus was, yes. Oh, man, that's, that's right. He was a great storyteller. That's why I love reading the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, because there are so many stories. In fact, uh, we call them parables, right? That's uh, right. In, in the Bible, there were parables, and a parable is a story with a point or a story with a message. Yes. Jesus always told stories, and it always had a message. He didn't tell the story for no reason. There was always a message in there. In fact, I don't know about you, Dan, but sometimes when we study the stories that Jesus told, we find many messages embedded in there. That is right. And Gary, what, what, what really blew me away is when I was reading those stories that is, uh, and parables, I, I was trying to evaluate how much story Jesus is going to use and, and how much theology he's going to use. 
And then mm -hmm. I came to the conclusion that Jesus used almost like 80% of stories and only 20% of theology. In other oh. words, sometimes, sometimes we like try to go really deep and big, but then I realized Jesus was much more interested in telling you the story where you can get some theology out of this. Oh man, I love that. And, and these stories can go deeper and deeper the more you study them, but you're right. He was very simple in the way he presented things. In fact, um, maybe you've noticed this, that people are more likely to watch a movie than they are to watch a documentary. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. that's right. Yeah. A documentary has a lot of facts and figures and information, but a story or a movie, you can put all those facts and figures in there, but in a story and people will actually be more likely to watch it and listen to it. So I gotta tell you, storytelling is really important, Pastor Dan and Pathfinders. Here's what it does. It motivates people, it inspires people, it even can be used to sell things. Stories are powerful and they grab attention. That is right. And that this, is, is right. this is why they say when a pastor preaches, every five minutes he should have at least one good story in his presentation. Again, so let's, yeah. let's, check, let's check everybody's math abilities. Yeah. If your pastor preaches for 30 minutes, how many stories should he have? Go, write them down. Let's do that, everybody. Uh, so write it. Uh, so if, if the pastor is preaching 30 minutes, how many stories should you have? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, some are saying five to six, some of them are saying six, some of them are saying three. Somebody is <laughs> saying, oh, I, I think it needs to be 60 stories. All together, yes. <laughs> all together. I mean, it would be very good to know from you, who is your favorite storyteller right now? Is it a pastor? Is it, uh, is it a family member? Is it mm. somebody that you know? Who is your favorite storyteller? Uh, oh. And here it is, Pastor Gary, just to give you some responses to this. Uh, somebody said that my pastor is my favorite, my mom. Um, uh, somebody said, Pastor Tony. Uh, so uh, somebody actually says, I love telling stories as well. Wow, somebody just mentioned my name there, Pastor Gary. I don't know. Wow, see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dan, you are a very good storyteller. I remember you telling the story about how you asked your wife to marry you. Yes. I will never forget that story. Um, can you tell it in one minute? No, I can't. Uh, maybe <laughs> <I> can't. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to circle around and make sure you have time at the end. So, Pathfinders, don't forget to remind me to ask Pastor Dan to tell the story of how he met, how he asked his wife to marry him, and we'll, we'll tell that story at the end. That gives you time to work through your story there, Pastor. Sounds good. So, if you're a youth leader right now or a Pathfinder and a student in school, if you can learn how to tell stories, you can really, really grab people's attention, and they'll listen to you, and then you, you earn the right to to share information with them just by telling them a story that attracts their attention. So stories are super important in life. In fact, if you're wanting to know, well, how can I get people to listen to me more? Tell stories, very important. They don't have to be really long, they can be really short, but tell stories. So we're gonna talk about, here are some areas where you can find stories. Some people are like, where are stories? Here's the neat thing about stories. Stories are happening all around you. In fact, many of you listening right now, you have stories, little things that have happened in your life or happened to people around you. You are seeing stories happening, playing out around you. The problem is we often don't see them as stories and don't tell other people about them. It's exciting when you discover them. But I wanna show you, we're gonna go through this little list here. Let's take a look at some places where you can find stories. You can find stories definitely in the Bible, amen? Yeah, There's man. lots of amazing stories in the Bible. Dan, what is your favorite story in the Bible? My favorite story in the Bible is a story of the prodigal son, by the way. Ooh, so you, you love that emoji story we saw earlier. Yeah, I did. I was really blown away. I was like, I'm going to copy and paste and keep it in my text messages so I can use it. <laughs> Amen. That's good. And what, you know, obviously one of my favorite stories and probably for a lot of you listening is the story of Daniel and the lion's den. Wow. I'm just so amazed that Daniel had such integrity because he could have easily just you know, closed the windows and prayed. He could have prayed in quiet in his own room when nobody was watching. He could have gone on a long trip during this time when he was being tempted to, uh, to not pray to God, but to only to the king. But he, he had incredible integrity, and he was willing to pay for it with his life. That tells you a lot about character, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But also, Pastor Gary, I'm thinking, what about if uh, you think, uh, for our listeners, what about if you, if you do the story in emojis for Daniel? We would love to see how would you do that. Ooh, yes. Somebody do that for Pastor Dan. So we want to look at the Bible. 
We want to look at history and church history. I don't know about you, but I love the story of Martin Luther in The Great Controversy, the book. Incredible story about a man who was the only one standing for Jesus at a time when it was very dangerous to stand for God. He almost lost his life, Pastor Dan. That's right. That's right. But church history is filled with stories of men and women who stood for Jesus. So we can learn about stories from the Bible, from our own lives, from history. Um, there's so many different places we can look. In nature, that's one of my favorite places. In fact, you might have heard some stories today with Pastor Jonathan. Yes, with the did. bird. And what, what did you love the best about Jonathan's presentation on birds, Pastor Dan? Well, when it comes to Jonathan's presentation, I, I was blown away of the detail. But at the same time, the fact that actually all stories of birds were coming to the point that God created them and that we also need to help to take care of them. So, so beautiful story of Jonathan where he challenges us all to make sure that we take care of those birds as well. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, and you know what, Pastor? Uh, it's very interesting that Jesus loved to tell stories from nature. Yes. yes. And, and let me ask you a question. Why do you think that was, Pastor Dan? Why in the world would he use stories from nature? Because I, I, but my opinion is because everybody had a chance to experience them. I, I, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, how rich or how poor, you still, you know, you still would go underneath the tree and, and the apple can fall down or, you know, so I think people experience it better. I love it. It's so true. And I think we all love animals and creatures. So, we, so everybody loves to hear stories about animals. I, you know, just, just a, a couple days ago, my wife and I traveled to a, a dog breeder's place where they, they raised German Shepherd puppies. Yes. And there were all these puppies around and they were running here and there going crazy. And I wondered, well, how will I find the right one? Well, after a while I picked one, but she didn't know me very well. She, yes. she was kind of shy. Who is this guy? And why is he taking me away from my mom and my dad? But here's what I learned that the more you pour love into a, an, an animal, the more the, the animal returns love to you. Yes. And you know what that reminds me of, Pastor Dan? 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, where the Bible says, we love God because he first loved us. And that's beautiful. And also, I need to say, I saw your, I saw your little uh, 0.5 dog, and it's <laughs> so cute. So uh, you need to know that in our family as well, we, uh, we, are, we are also very connected to German shepherds as well. So we love the choice you made. I love it. I love it. And, and animals are a perfect example of how we are to respond to God because he pours his love into us. Now, I want to show you something, Pastor Dan. Yeah. I got a question for you. Do you think my dog loves me after I poured all kinds of love into her? I think, I think he does. Okay. We it. haven't scripted this, but let's see if that's actually true. Here we go. All right. So, guys, if the dog doesn't come. Oh, it came. <laughs> oh, <laughs> She was sleeping, so I don't know if she'll give me a kiss today, but can you give me a little kiss? Oh, oh. yeah, proof. It's a you proof. pour love into an animal, and they love you back. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves it, Pastor Gary. Uh, many people are commenting, it's so cute. And, yeah, uh, her, name is, her name is Sadie, and it means princess. Oh, beautiful. Many people did ask about what the name is, and, and that that's beautiful to know as well. <laughs> but you see how we can use um, animals and use nature in such a powerful way to teach a very simple, uh, very simple message. Yes. So I think that's one reason why Jesus used nature, because people can see it around, like you said, Pastor Dane, and it's very important. We can, we can also uh, learn stories from great books that are out there. I want to share with you something, and you're going to love this. There is a series of books that you can get at the Adventist Book Center or your Adventist uh, bookstore, and these books are filled with amazing stories, very short stories. I would recommend that you never read these stories. Never read them to people when you're sharing stories. Instead, read them for yourself, learn them, and then tell them. But these right here are powerful rescue stories. Here's another one about Sabbath stories. And these are short stories that you can just learn them and then tell them with passion to people. Yes. Here's something. This is one of my favorites right here, Pastor Dan. This is prayer stories. Can you see this? Yes, I can see it. Yes, I can. Oh, man. So there's so many stories that you can get a hold of. And what I love about these, Pastor, is that they're written by a Seventh-day Adventist, a young person named Helen Lee. And uh, just some really, really good stories in there. And I, I, I don't get paid for this, just so you all know. This no, is... no, we know, Pastor Gary. <laughs> and, 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 and some people are asking, uh, where do we get stories if there are no stories? But, of course, uh, like you said, everybody has a story for sure. Uh, but there are great books as well, Pastor Gary, as you mentioned, some of them. 
not all of these books would be available for everybody, uh, but certainly uh, uh, maybe there are some ad additional books that can help in, in new finding illustrations and stories. Yes, there's no question that everyone has access to this right here. That is right. This is filled with amazing stories. Some of the best children's stories, best young adult stories, and best adult stories right in the Bible itself. I want to share another book that just came out recently. Um, this is, might be for a little bit of an older group of people that might be listening right now, maybe some of our master guides. But these are mission stories about young people, uh, young adults who laid down their life sharing the three angels' message in the world uh, back early, in the early days of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's a and great, great book, and you can get this also at your Adventist bookstore or Adventist Resource Center. Yes, and, it, 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 and, and also, uh, sometimes we forget the, really the value of, 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 the, of, of the faith we have, and, and certainly it came from Jesus, but on top of that, many people had to sacrifice so much that that message can come to Serbia, where, where my family found about Jesus. Wow. And many, many people had to pay their, uh, you know, their lives in Africa, in South America, all around the world, so you and me can know about the message of salvation. You know, it's, you're, you're saying some really true things, Pastor, because, you know, in this story, the average life expectancy for a missionary was between the ages for, for it was two to five years. That's how, how long many Seventh-day Adventists lived, and they would die in the mission field. And these are their stories that, and why they were willing to lay down their life. Uh, mission stories, I want to say, are so powerful because they connect young people. They connect us with our church and and the passion our church is motivated by to get the three angels' message out there before Jesus returns. So in, that, in other words, Pastor Gary, what, uh, what Daryl shared with us, sharing some emojis and sharing some text message, don't put our lives in danger. And they're free, majority of time. And so if these people are willing to sacrifice so much more, I think we should sacrifice a little bit of our time and, and take it forward, this message of, of soon coming of Jesus Christ. Amen, Pastor. So we've learned several ways, places we can go to get stories, but I want to share just one more with you, okay? And this is really important. And this is one you're not going to hear very often, but you should listen to me very carefully, Pathfinders. This may be one of the best places to find stories, and that is from the older people in your church. Yes. You know, so many times we're like, oh, the old folks, oh, the old folks, and we have this, this separation of the young and the old, and this is very unfortunate because you can learn some incredible stories if you just simply sit down and ask an older person to tell you some. They will tell you some stories that other people have never heard before. In fact, I won't, I won't mention any movies, Pastor Dan, just so I don't get in trouble, but there are some of the greatest movies out there now were, were written because someone took the time to listen to an older person share. That's right, that's right. And Gary, do you know, Pastor Gary, do you know what happened? Uh, when I listened to the uh, story of the older members, it's like I almost feel transported to the time when they lived that story. And I don't think there is a, uh, you know, any virtual way of you being there by, uh, except listen to this story. So what are you saying, Pastor Gary? I 100% support. I agree with you, my brother. It's, it's so important that we learn to listen to other people and also look for the stories in our own life that we can share with others. So here's what I'd like everybody to do, Dan. I'd like them to all share just one word. Which of these seven possibilities for finding a story is their favorite place to find a story is it bible history nature character books older people or personal stories that you've experienced so have them just write it in the chat section excellent so pastor gary uh, the chat started working straight away uh, wow. first the responses were, were uh, bible and books uh, so the third response was nature but a majority of the chat coming in is coming from the books and Bible at the moment in a Zoom. But when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, the Facebook, because they are nine seconds later, then uh, they're getting the feeds nine seconds later. Let me, uh, let's just have a look what they're saying then. Uh, so here it is, um, nature, uh, Zoom, Bible, um, uh, all the people and Bible, some people are saying. Uh, but uh, so, so it seems to me, everybody has a different preference of how to get a story. I just want to share myself, um, my favorite way to get a story is from all the people and also testimonies of anybody, it doesn't matter the age. So these yeah, are two yeah. more places for me, my Pastor Gary. What about you? Where do you prefer, Pastor Gary, to get your stories? Oh man, I, I, I've used every one of these areas, but I think my favorite, the ones that I'm most passionate about 
are the first person stories, the ones about yes. that have happened in my own life. That's when you start getting really passionate and that's when you'll notice people will listen to you more when those yes. stories flow from an experience in your own life. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Gary. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, good. So you guys are thinking about it. And like I said, open your eyes because all around you, there are stories that you can tell and stories are really important for inspiring and motivating and, and leading people to Jesus Christ because that's really the point is to lead others to Jesus through our stories. So um, I wanna um, share with you just really quickly, just a couple guidelines in telling a story. First of all, never read a story, okay? Don't read the story. I mean, if you're, if you're reading a story for a Bible verse before you share, that's, of course, that's really good. But when you get to something like this, you don't need to read the story. Tell the story. Learn it and let it, and let it become part of you and communicate it with the people that are listening to you. That's way more powerful than me getting up here and reading the story Gift from Heaven. I mean, most of you are going to fall asleep before I even get to the end, or you'll be nodding off somewhere else. But when somebody tells a story, there's powerful. Yeah. There's a tip for you directors. The second thing I would say to you is whenever you can, use an object lesson. Okay, object lessons are really helpful. I just gave you one, my pet, uh, Sadie. I, I yes. showed you an object lesson, right? Yes. So I want to give you a little object lesson on how you can share the gospel with someone, okay? It's very simple. And I don't want you to be worried about having to keep up with me. But if you have a piece of paper next to you, just grab it real quickly. But if you don't, that's okay. Don't go anywhere. Because um, you'll be able to show this later on, right, Dan? And they'll yeah, be able to right. This okay. video is going to be saved and also on YouTube, so you can just forward it, and we will tell you in the description of which minutes you need to go to to see this. Okay, very good. So here it is. I'm going to show you how to share the gospel, and I challenge all of our Pathfinders to share this at church or share this with your brother and sister or your best friends or at your Pathfinder, at your next Pathfinder group, okay? So here it is. When Jesus made the world, it was perfect, right? It's all the shapes perfect. There was no marks on it or anything like that. The world was perfect. But then guess what happened? Sin came into the world. And I'm going to fold the paper down. You can't see me, but I'll show you here. I'll fold the paper down like that. But sin came into the world. And now the world was not perfect anymore. It was misshaped. There was sick, sickness and death. There were viruses like the coronavirus. And there's wars and all kinds of crazy things happening in the world. But God didn't desert us. He sent prophets to point us to his love to remind us that someday soon he would send his son Jesus to die for the sins of the world, and that someday soon he would come back and make the world brand new. But he sent prophets to point us up. See the arrow pointing up? Do you see that, Pastor Dan? Yes, we can. So he, he sent prophets to, to keep pointing us to his love and his promises of the Messiah and the second coming. And then guess what happened? Now I'm going to fold it in like this. Yes. Guess what happened? Jesus himself, the creator who made all things perfect, he came down to this earth. You can slide your finger down like that. See, Pastor Dan? Yeah, you can. Down to this earth, and he became a man. He humbled himself and became a man, the Bible says in Philippians. And he became obedient to actually death on the cross. And that's what happened on the cross. When Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was torn like that. Just, I ripped it, right? See, yeah. it started like this, and I ripped it right down the middle. Now you have this, this, this number one, which is, tells us that Jesus is the only way, the one savior of the world. He's the only way that we can be saved and ready for the soon coming of Jesus. Is that beautiful? Beautiful. But I'm not even done yet. It gets even better, Pastor Dan. Are you ready? Yes, I am. You say he's the one way to be saved. You got the letter one here. But yes. how does he save us? Very simply like this. And all you have to do is open it up and you'll find out the one way the world can be saved. You can be saved. And that is through cross. Through the cross of Jesus. That's right, my brother. Amen, Pastor Gary. Thank you so much for that. I'm so, sure that many Pathfinders and also leaders can use this in their local churches. This is yes. actually a lesson to us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm in trouble when you come and invite me to come and speak sometime, Dan. I'll be doing this and they'll be like, we already heard this. <laughs> yes, they're like, Pastor Gary, we did it already. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we're learning lots of different things about, um, about uh, storytelling. You know, don't read it, tell it, make it come from your heart. We've learned about where we can find stories. We've also learned that um, I want to give you guys a quick challenge, first of all. Make sure I want to challenge you guys to tell a story to young people ages five and under. And then I challenge you to tell stories to young people older than five. But, it, but I want to challenge all of you to tell a story to somebody in the next few days. Now, if you promise to do that, I want you to raise your hand on the chat. 
Raise your hand on the chat. Let's have a look uh, who is promising to do that. All right, I, I can see some hands going on, Pastor Gary. Uh, Pastor oh, good. Uh, what I would suggest as well is if you are not able to leave your house, but you know you have a younger brother and sister, tell them a story. Or if you have a grandparents in your house, or your mom and dad, you know they're older, so tell them a story. We, they would love to hear it. So we want you to try to be as close as possible to complete this honor in, in this lockdown situation at the moment. You know, thank you. That's really good. So there's people around you. Don't, you don't need to go anywhere to tell the story, but right here locally. Or maybe you could do it on Zoom. You know, write a friend, send a Zoom message to a friend, and tell them a story. But are you, how many are promising to tell a story, Pastor Dan? Well, Pastor Gary, I saw quite a few hands. Uh, I did not manage to count them as we have 100 people in the room. <laughs> okay. All right. So we want to challenge. There's a little challenge for you. Um, now, remember, when you're talking to young people under five years old, your story should not be more than three minutes. Pastor Dan, how many, how many children's stories have you heard that have gone for 20 minutes? I have heard many stories which go for 20 minutes. And... <laughs> please, please don't do that. <laughs> when it, first of all, because usually you're giving a, a certain amount of time when you're in church or in Sabbath school class, Make sure you don't go over that time. That way they'll invite you back another time to tell a story. That's right. <laughs> and, second, and secondly, remember that children have a very, very small attention span. So three minutes is good for ages five and under. Five minutes is good for those up to about 12 or 13 years of age. Don't make it super long. Make it enjoyable. Use, use object lessons and tell stories and get them engaged. But don't make it long. Pastor Dan, I don't know if you believe in this, but sometimes it's better for them to want more of you than less of you. What do you think of that? I fully agree about this. I fully agree because I can tell you for sure that, you know, there was a moment uh, that, uh, you know, that we just need to stop. And, uh, you know, I, I, sometimes it goes just too long. I, I notice I made the same mistake sometimes, Pastor Gary, as well. And you learn lessons. So that's right. Better to have a shorter than longer and a higher quality than longer, for sure. Yes, uh, that's so true. And when you're telling stories to those who are children, always have just one point to your story, not two, three, four, five, six, or 15. Yes, that's right. One point when they're young, just one point when they're children, two points when they're youth, and three points when they're adults. If you have four or five points in your story, you probably need to have a sermon series. <laughs> I fully agree about this. I fully agree about this. <laughs> well, you know, you can give as many points as you want to, but what I'm saying is they're only going to remember one yeah, well, or two or three. Yeah, well, that, that's right, Pastor Gary. I can tell you the most memorable sermons and messages I heard, they would have one, one, to, three, one to three messages, but one is usually the, uh, the, the one which sticks with my mind for sure. Wow. Yeah, you know, um, I, I saw a little YouTube uh, video the other day that was so powerful. It was so short. It was a man that was saying, look, um, if you put a basketball in my hand, the basketball's worth about 11, 11 bucks. Yes. Or maybe 20 if you get a nice basketball. But if you put it in a basketball, you know, um, star's hands, that ball is suddenly worth millions and millions. That's right. He says, if you put a golf club in my hand, it might be worth 20 or 30 bucks but you put it in a golf champion's hand and yep. that golf club suddenly is worth millions and millions of dollars. And then he said this and it's so powerful. And it was just a quick little thing. And he kept using, he kept pulling out the basketball. He pulled out the golf club. He pulled out the hockey stick. He pulled out a bunch of different sticks that we use in sports. And he, he used that comparison in my hands. It's not very, it's not worth much, but in, in an expert's hands, look how much it's worth. And then he said this, he said, whose hands are you in? Yes. Yes. And, I, and isn't I, that a wonderful thing that we are in the hands of Jesus, Dan? And, and um, Pastor Gary, the message like this will stay with you for the rest of your life. Every single time you see a basketball ball, you will think about like, hey, am I in God's hands? Uh, yes. You see a golf, golf, golf club, in, you know, am, am I that uh, you know, club in God's hands? So I think it's a very powerful way for not just children, but our part finders, leaders, and churches. Oh, uh, amen, amen. So I want to talk really quickly because I want, to, I want to also practice what I'm preaching here, and I want to end this message with you wanting more of me and not less of me. So I'm going to really quickly, in, in, in the uh, honor, you see um, some basic components for putting a story together. You have the setup, the when and the where, and the description of the protagonist. You have the conflict, 
uh, description of the antagonist, nature of the conflict, you have a reaction to the conflict, what the antagonist does, what the antagonist does, um, and then you have resolution, how was the conflict resolved, and then you have the aftermath, what was the effect of everything. But can I make it really simple on everybody? Yep. The story is like an animal. It has a head, a body, and a tail. Okay. That's it. <laughs> If you know what an animal looks like with a head, a body, and a tail, you can tell a story. Yes. You see, the head is how you grab their attention. It's a, maybe it's a question you ask. Maybe you ask the question, um, how many of you love animals? It's yes. a quick question, right? And all of a sudden, people are like, oh, yeah, I love animals. And you grab them. That's the head. The body is the story that you're going to tell them, like the story I told you about Sadie and going to get her. Yes. And the tail is the point or the message that you're trying to tell. Yes. I made the message that we love God because he first loved us. It's very simple. It's a head, body, tail, a story as an animal. What do you think, Pastor Dan? I, I, I fully agree. And uh, Pastor Gary, as you know, your, your first point was don't read the story. Uh, but then some people are going to say, Pastor Gary, hey, I can't remember the story. It's too long or whatever it is. And I just want to say, Pastor Gary, exactly what you just said. When I'm telling the stories, it's like uh, for me walking through, uh, uh, through a park. And I, I, uh, that's how I remember stories. So on the left hand side, I see the bush. On the right hand side, I see a tree. On the, you know, and, 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 and I just follow from point to point until actually the story becomes part of me. And as you said, there is a head, there is a body, and there is a tail. Tell the stories as you're walking through them. I think that's the one way that you can remember your story. Oh, that is, you're, you're right on the money there, brother. And we can never forget that when you're sharing a story to lift up Jesus, the Holy Spirit will always be with you. He will always help you do your work, study the story, make the story part of you, like Pastor Dan said. So it's, you're, you're feeling it, you're part of it. And then I promise you this, I have never, in all my years of ministry, I have never been let down by the Holy Spirit. He's never brought me up on the stage without helping me to remember and communicate the message. Never once. Um, but, Gary, also, let's also make sure that our partners understand that, that the work of the Holy Spirit as well uh, uh, is so important. But, Pastor Gary, you need to tell them how much hours you put in preparing, preparing the sermon as well. So the yeah. hard work goes yes, with the is. blessings of God. It's so, so, so let, part of us, let's make sure that when we do present the message of Jesus Christ, we spend time in preparing it so it's good for, for everybody. Yes, for every, for every hour that you're presenting, you should have spent at least two hours in preparation. That would be how I would say it when you're, when you're telling the story. But most stories are not an hour long anyways, but you, you want to double your time in preparing. Um, and, and that really depends on this. For example, when I uh, tell a story, because by the way, I've used these stories before at summer camps. Whenever I tell a story, I'll read it first and I'll kind of outline it for myself. I'll, okay, what's the head? What's the body? What's the tail? of the story. And yeah. I remember head, body, tail when I'm preaching or when I'm telling the story. And it reminds me. And then I think, okay, what is the age group? Oh, they're only five-year-olds. I'm speaking to real young adventurers. So I'm going to just remember to bring out one point, not two, not three, not four, not too many. Hmm. Oh, it's Pathfinders. Well, I should probably bring out two points then. And so I'll do one and two points. I'll remember that for the body. And then if I'm dealing with adults, then I'll go three points. Thank you so much, Pastor Gary, for that breakdown. All right, so your head is how you grab their attention. It could be a question. It could be maybe you want to do some uh, hand motions. I, I know love, uh, I love to do the wave. Sometimes you do the wave or sometimes you do stuff like this. Sometimes you go like this, but then you get in trouble for being a disco dancer, so don't do that. But there's lots of things you can do to grasp people's attention at the very beginning. You could do the object lesson like we just did here with the paper. Um, but you want to catch their attention at the very beginning and then you want to share the story, the body. And remember, the age group depends on how many points you want to make for the tail, which is the conclusion. Yes. All right. So real quickly, you can tell the story in first person, second person, or third person. Dan, tell us what first person is. That is that, uh, the story that happened to me. And I would say, well, as I was walking down the street, a German shepherd jumped out, and then I jumped on a tree. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a story that comes from your experience. You, you, um, it's so important. In fact, like we said, those are the most powerful ones, aren't they? The, yeah, second, the second person is when you're talking about 
them or you. It's the you question. You're, you're, you're helping them imagine that they're in a situation. I love to talk about the second coming of Jesus in second person. And I tell the young people to imagine that you're there when Jesus comes back. That's second person. Imagine you're there. And you see Jesus coming in, in the clouds. And his feet do not touch the ground, but you see the whole world is light up with his glory. And you see the dead who have trusted in Jesus come back to life, but not scary. They come back to life with no more diseases, and they're completely healthy, and they're strong. And you see all these things. And you see angels going down to the gravesides and saying, come out, come out. Your father calls you. And you see people beginning to start floating in the air to meet Jesus in the air. And then you, you feel him throwing his arms around you. And then you travel with him into heaven. And then I, I tell the story from second person. That's some powerful stuff. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is so easy to imagine when it's told that way because you, you are just challenged to be there. And that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Gary. And then finally, third person is when you tell a story that somebody else has told, but you, you tell it like Pastor Dan said to make sure that you, you feel the story for yourself, but you're telling it about someone else's. It's just as powerful. I would say the most powerful ones are first person. The second, uh, second person are the second most powerful. And third person is the third most powerful, but they're all very powerful. Which one are your favorite stories to tell young people and Pastor Dan? Uh, well, uh, le let's ask that question to everybody else there. So, so guys, uh, which uh, way, uh, 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 you know, so, so let's phrase the question again, Pastor Gary. Which, uh, which, which one of these three models is your favorite way to tell the story? Okay. Like first person, second person, or third person? All right, Pastor Gary, uh, you, you might be surprised. Uh, everybody meeting. Uh, so so uh, I would say 80% people are saying first person. Uh, uh, and then... Uh, uh, very interesting, Pastor Gary. Not I, I haven't seen anybody who mentioned the third person uh, 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 perspective of the story. Uh, wow. So, uh, so well, uh, well, actually, I did. Somebody on Facebook um, mentioned the third. Oh, this is very interesting, Pastor Gary. The uh, Facebook is on the third person, and a Zoom is a first and a second. Oh, yay! Awesome. Yeah, you can try all of those. In fact, those of you that have committed to getting your honor. You remember, you're being challenged now in your honor to tell two stories to two different age groups. You can choose whether you want to do first, second, or third, but don't do the same one. Try, try each of them. Try, maybe do three stories, but if not, choose two of those options. Yes, absolutely. And also, Pastor Gary, I just want to say something, what I found out about our young people, because some young people would say, hey, I don't have experience with God. I don't have that story. Let me just tell you young people there uh, who are listening this, for many years of my life as a, as a young Adventist, as a, somebody who grew up in pastor's home, I didn't have experience with God. And, and, and for those years, I was, I was telling the stories in the third person of the people who lived that faith, people who wow. met God. So I just want to encourage young people, if you are struggling with experience with God at the moment, don't despair. Use yeah. somebody else's story for now until God gives you the story that you can share with him. Because it's so important. Sometimes we just give up. But let me tell you, there are people of faith there which you can use their stories to share uh, God uh, with others. Pastor Dan, that was right accurate. Don't be discouraged if you do. I don't have a testimony. You know, some of us, you know, we don't have radical stories about how we came to Jesus from drug abuse or we're in the world and then came back. Some of us um, don't have those kind of stories. And so we're tempted to think, well, we don't have anything to share, but that's not true. Um, we do have things to share, but while God is showing you what it is that we can communicate, it's good to share some other people's stories. That's wonderful. That's really good. I love that, Pastor Dan. Um, you know, those of you that do have a testimony, some of you are like, you know what, uh, or we all have a testimony, but those of you that kind of have an idea how you could tell the story, here's a simple outline to share your testimony. First, tell how your life was before Jesus. Then tell them how you met Jesus. And then finally, number three, tell them how your life has been now that you're with Jesus, how your life has been changed now. It's a very simple, your life before Christ, your life, how you met Jesus, and then how your life has been changed as a result of Jesus. And you can share that story with any age, as long as you uh, make it age appropriate, right? Yes. All right. So we're going to wrap this up by remembering another point that Jesus taught us, that whenever Jesus told a story, he told it because he wanted to make a point. He wanted to give some truth to the people listening because they were hungry to know the truth. Yes. 
You know, we're not about entertaining people. We're about edutaining people. I never heard that before. And as English, as English is my second language, this is a new, <laughs> this is a new word in my dictionary. <laughs> well, entertaining is we, we get people's attention just for the sake of getting their attention. Yes. But edutainment or edutating people, edutating is that word education in there. Edutaining is making it exciting and creative because the gospel should never be boring. I think Ellen White says it's a sin to make the gospel boring. It should be exciting. It's okay. It is exciting. It's not hard to do. Yes. But see, as, as a Christian, when we're telling stories, we should be telling stories in order to excite young people with a message that, that God has for them. So a story yes. has, has a point, not just to entertain, but to edutain people with the truth. So I want to end with number six and number seven really quickly. You know, it's important that we tell mission stories. I think that's really, really important. This happens when you, you interview uh, missionaries or maybe you read books like this that uh, tell you about mission stories. It's important that the Seventh-day Adventist Church hear more mission stories. Yes. Um, when I was two years old, there was a knock on our door and some Seventh-day Adventists who lived just across the street came over to my parents' house and shared the message of Jesus with my parents. In two years' time, my parents accepted Jesus and were baptized. And then guess what? They took me, I was two years old at the time, they took me and my brother and sister, and we traveled to Malawi, Africa as missionaries. Wow. Incredible story. But remember, being a missionary isn't just about going across the sea. It could also be about going across the street. All around you is mission stories of people, things have been, that, how God has maybe used you and used others. But we need to hear mission stories. In fact, Pathfinders, you might not know this, but guess what the theme is for the World Seventh-day Adventist Church for the next five years. Tell it's us I will what, Dan? No, no, I want you to tell it for everybody. <laughs> it is I will go. It's beautiful. So all around the world, young people of all ages, even young at heart, are challenged to go and be a missionary either across the sea or across the street. But we got to hear stories. I want to tell you something, Pastor Dan. There's no such thing as being bored when you serve Jesus as a missionary. I agree. And God keeps us busy and keeps us excited as we go and serve him. But people need to hear those stories. And guess what? Because we're living in a time of coronavirus, we, people desperately need to hear our health message. What do you think about that? Yes. You know, we're hearing a lot about social distancing, and that's important. We're hearing a lot about wearing your mask. We're hearing a lot about stay isolated. Don't go here and there so you don't get the disease. But guess what we don't hear a lot about? We don't hear a lot about how to eat healthy and drink healthy and exercise so your immune system is strong so that when we're finally able to get out of our houses, we're still healthy and we're able to fight off viruses and other things that attack our immune system. So the world needs to hear the wonderful things we have to share about taking care of our body. Um, and so these are stories that we need to make sure we include when we tell stories, missionary stories and health stories. You know, Dan, I always loved um, the acronym New Start. Okay. You know what New Start stands for, right? No, I don't. Tell me. Uh, N stands for nutrition. E is exercise. W is water. S is sunlight. T is trusting God. Uh, A is air. R is rest. And T is temperance. Okay. New Start. That is the Adventist uh, health message in just one simple little acronym. And we can tell stories that lift up all of those points or maybe just one of those points at a time. But without any doubt, Pastor Gary, God has given us many stories that we can share. And sometimes we just choose not to share them. And, and I think that uh, with the few principles that we share today in this beautiful honor, we have a really good basis to share the beautiful message of Jesus Christ through the stories that God has given us. But if God hasn't given us, there is somebody else's story there that can change lives as well. That can be Jesus' story. That can be somebody who is older than us, or maybe even younger than us, but who had that experience. And, and it's just beautiful to have that opportunity that we can share it. Pastor Dan, thank you very much. And there you have it. There is the storytelling honor of the Pathfinder Strong. <laughs>